Hey guys, it's me, Michael Gibbons, and I just came across this video, and I am already thought this is worthy of a recording. Are we close? How close are we to talking with animals? This is right up my alley, so, and this is a new seeker. I've watched a couple of their videos. It's really about science, all that good stuff. And this is a really new video, so I'm really interested in what's the latest thing that's being done research on this. Because I actually um, am kind of doing my own kind of thing with teaching animals um, to talk. But I'll get in on that in a little while. It's, um, it's like in its beginning stages, but I'm going to watch this video see what's going on and work off of that you may not want to admit it but at one time in your life you've talked to an animal maybe it was letting a dog know that it was a good dog or asking a cat where it's been maybe you gave words of encouragement to an elephant or scolded a sheep whichever animal it was that you talked to one thing is for sure it probably didn't talk back but what if it could Scientists are working on ways to not only understand what animals are saying, but to one day talk back, forever changing the way that we think about them. So how close are we to talking with animals? He said animals. It's not just like the dolphins or apes. Okay, I know what you're all saying. Animals do talk, just not with words. They make noises, they have facial expressions and body language. But this isn't exactly what we are talking about. I think it's important to distinguish between this what we call... Lady. Oh my god. Hunter College. I want to go there for college. Next year. Oh my god. Because they do have... Um, actually a class in animal behavior, which is what I want to get into. Department of Psychology? Yes. This lady, I see her all the time. She's the one that's done research... Uh, with dolphins, and it looks like she goes more into it. Communication and language. Communication is the more general term, and it really refers to this exchanging of signals in a meaningful way. And language is a word that is fraught with interpretations and involved in many debates, whether other animals have language or are they communicating. Well, the truth is that we suppose that animals have language, but... In a lot of cases, we have to actually prove this experimentally. No one has yet proven that an animal other than us has language. Partly because the idea of what constitutes a language hasn't really been established. But in the broader sense, language should be distinct and organized patterns of communication with a near infinite number of combinations that have been learned and used voluntarily, not in a reactionary or instinctual manner. When your dog barks at a squirrel that runs past, this is a predictable instinctual response, so we don't consider it language. But there have been studies that show some do communicate in a very complex manner that show traits of language. Now we just have to figure out how to decipher what they're saying. I think the possibility of us having a Rosetta Stone with an animal is uh, very real. What we have to do is we have to do the experiments to the possibility of us having a Rosetta Stone with an animal is uh, very real. What we have to figure out how to decipher what they're saying. I think the possibility of us having a Rosetta Stone with an animal is uh, very real. What we have to do is we have to do the experiments to determine the context in which animal signals are given. And that context really? is going to really? Very real. What we have to do is we have to do the experiments to determine the context in which animal signals are given. And that context is going to give us the Rosetta Stone. And that's exactly what's happening. Dr. Khan Slobachikov has been studying prairie dog calls because within those high pitched chirps, they're actually saying a lot. Uh, they are able to to tell each other what the species of predator is and the alarm calls are given in response to a predator. The prairie dogs tell each other whether the predator is a red-tailed hawk, is a coyote, is a domestic dog, or is a human. They can describe the physical features of the predator. So with humans, they can tell each other about the color of clothes that's 
person is wearing, about the general size and shape of the person, something about the speed of travel of the person. Combining years of recorded prairie dog alarms with AI technology, he may one day be able to create a prairie dog to English translate. Unfortunately, determining that animals have language is a difficult process. It's not an easy one. So it takes a lot of effort and time and it takes a certain amount of money. Oh, shoot. One of the main obstacles that was a that's... I love Gibbons. Difficult I process. Gibbons. It's not an easy one. Right. So it takes a lot of effort and time and it takes oh, a certain shoot. amount of money. Yes. One of the main obstacles it, that slows us down from communicating with other species is that we don't have a shared code. While Dr. Slobodchikov is trying to use prairie dog language as the shared code, others are looking to create a new code, one that can hopefully bridge the gap between humans and animals. We've now created a four by eight foot touchscreen, an interactive underwater touchscreen for dolphins that will allow them choice and control, and it will allow us to understand what they are, the kinds of signals they're using and their own interests, more about their cognitive abilities. Dr. Reese and her team will observe the dolphin's choices and compare that to their vocalizations and mannerisms with the hope of decoding some parts of the dolphin's speech. Again, to create a Rosetta Stone to help translate and hopefully one day talk to dolphins using their language. In our lab, we tried to give the dolphins a means of communication using a keyboard so that they could request and identify different objects. And that's what we're working on now so that they can produce uh, a code themselves. Well, if it's so hard to learn their language, can't we just teach them ours? Isn't that an easier way to have an interspecies conversation? Before it didn't work. Maybe. For decades, scientists apes, have been yeah. working with apes to teach them American Sign Language in order to learn more about both the species okay, and the origin of human language. So the first chimp was Washoe. She was wild caught by the Air Force. They were collecting chimps for the space program. Instead of going into space, she joined this sign language project. So she was raised like a human child and all of her caregivers use American Sign Language. Washoe was able to learn over 200 signs, talked to scientists, and even taught another chimp how to sign. More studies popped up, most famously with Coco the gorilla, and for a moment, the lines between human and animal blurred ever so slightly. Some were still skeptical, though, arguing that these apes were just mimicking the signs for reward instead of voluntarily conversing. And other studies were done that showed apes talking amongst themselves with signs and having private conversations with each other. They seem to be using language voluntarily. Now, even though great progress has been made, some in this field do feel uncomfortable with the idea of bringing new apes or any animal into captivity to study. As someone that's been doing this for a long time, I feel that this research should never be repeated. But the chimps that do have sign language, I feel that it's important for us to continue to document it and study it. And that's what may be at stake here. That's why scientists are interested in studying interspecies communication and closing the gap between us and them. I think if, if we could talk to animals, it would really change our relationship with them because people would realize that they are much more like us in many respects. We are taught with our culture that we're so special and superior to other beings. When people see the chimps signing, it's like the chimps are reaching across that imaginary boundary that our culture has put up. For a lot of people, that just uh, helps them to widen their circle of compassion. It's going to really perhaps end what Lauren Isley has called the long loneliness of us being the only species that can communicate with each other. It would be very exciting to be able to communicate with other species on this planet. If we were ever able to have a conversation with an animal, we'd first need to decode the sounds and movements that they make when communicating. This would be our Rosetta Stone, the groundwork for being able to talk back, a scenario that might change how we think, govern, work, innovate, and of course, eat. So how close are we to talking with animals? So we really have to abandon our arrogance. 
and it's our arrogance that keeps us from communicating right. with other humans and other cultures and it's our arrogance that has probably slowed our progress in understanding what non-humans are talking about. We're already communicating with our animals in simple ways. If we then ask the question, how close are we to having a more sophisticated dialogue or exchange with other animals? I would say we still have a long way to go and we're just in the infancy of understanding how to do it. And I think it really requires decoding more of what they're doing in their own natural systems and finding ways of incorporating that into what we want to create as a shared code. So it's complicated, but it's intriguing. Thanks for watching How Close Are We? Let us know in the comments what topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes. If you want more How Close Are We? Click here to watch our playlist and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. God, I'm still a little sick though. So, okay. Um, a lot of that stuff I did know, but the one where he said about the apes, let me go back to that. Studying interspecies communication. They seem to be using language voluntarily. Now, even though great progress has been made, some in this field do feel uncomfortable with the idea of bringing new apes or any animal into captivity to study. As someone that's been doing this for a long time, I feel that this research should never be repeated. But the chimps that do have sign language, I feel that it's important for us to continue to document it. And so that's why they haven't done it with any new apes. Oh, that's why. I mean, I mean, it does make sense. Because in the 70s, they would, um, it was, it was a lot more easier to, you know, get a chimp, do it for research, because they didn't know much about great apes, teach them sign language in a more, you know, human-like environment. But uh, they haven't been doing it recently. The, the apes like Washoe, Nim, Coco, have passed, and, and, and Chantek, the orangutan, have passed away. And all that's left, I think, is the bonobos, like Kanzi. So when they're gone, what's gonna what's gonna be left? You know, I mean, I'm sure there are still some apes out there in zoos or sanctuaries that have learned sign language, but we just don't know about them because they're not as famous as the ones that they actually taught. But I was always wondering why they didn't try to get bring more apes, but. I guess that's the reason. Because I actually want to try something like that too. Um, I would like to try it with um, some type of primate. Uh, if or when, where or when I get one. But for, you know, but that would probably be like on another scale. For right now, I'm starting off with animals that are easily accessible like birds, like parrots. One of the animals that he's shown because parrots already do talk. So it would just be easier to teach them to say, understand what they're saying, which is what I do. But um, my parrot, Nigel, um, who I don't know why he's not in this video, is, um, is in the beginning stage of learning. I do teach him to actually understand what he says. I talk to him all the time, I explain things to him, I show him pictures and stuff like that, I read to him, show him, ed watch, have him watch educational shows that teach about words and stuff, you know, for like little children, because he's only 10 months old, and he can live up to be 70, so he's got a long life ahead of him, a long, long life ahead of him, and you know, in a couple years, probably start seeing some significant changes or progress i don't know i mean i try to think of it as like the stage of like a baby you know a 10 month old baby probably isn't gonna start saying well actually he has said his first word he did say hi because he's he's been said hi to a lot like everywhere we go but, you know, it's just a matter of time to really see if all that stuff is actually working, you know? Um, but this is really, really exciting. I I would like to... Oh, oh, there we 
There you go. Frozen dog. This? This is Toby. He's right. Oh, wait. Right here. Hey. Hey there. Hi there. What are you doing? God, your breath stinks. God, Jesus, man. Ugh. Ugh, oh, you gotta brush. I'm gonna brush your teeth. And give you this breath spray. Which, by the way, I don't know where I bought it, but it it temporarily helps. Ugh, dog breath. But, um, but yeah, um, I really would like to know how this all goes. I really, this is really, this is really some fascinating stuff. And I really do think this could really help change the world in a way. Because the, a really main thing about this, um... Besides our inability to understand, it's just the willingness. Because a lot of people, they don't want to believe that. If we could talk to another animal, people, it makes people, it probably make people feel really weird or uncomfortable because it's something that's never happened before. It's something, it's going to be something new. So when it does happen for the first time, it'll be kind of like talking to people of another culture, another language, and might probably lead to, I mean, what happens now when animals are now living around among people, getting jobs, start talking, what happens if they start getting discriminated, you know, all that stuff, you know, I mean, I'm sure that'll be a, like, long, long ago, but with the research being done now, it could very well happen in our lifetime right now. Which I do hope it will. I will try to be one of those few people that will try to push that that world, um, that future along. You know, because I'm one of the people who really want to see that happen. Because I really am tired of people really disrespecting animals in the sense of just like saying, Oh, it's an animal. It doesn't know anything. It's stupid. It's a dumb animal. You know? Stuff like that. Even in, even when we go walking outside with me and my uh, parrot Nigel, he one thing he does not like my parrot. He hates when people say Polly want a cracker. He hates it. He hates it, and it's really annoying because they say it in that annoying voice. You know, it annoys me too. <sighs> but um. I, re I, I could go on and on about this, but um, these are the kind of videos that I live for. I like seeing videos like this. Videos based on like animals, animal intelligence, animal behavior, you know, really smart animals. And I think that's what I'm going to like really start shaping this channel about. I mean, if I do end up keeping this channel, I might probably move on to another channel. But this is like the beginning stages. But um... Anywho, if you enjoyed this video, which I have, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And, uh, until next time, peace.